I'm Ben, and I've had an exquisite life filled with love, comfort, and a lot of complicated issues. Me and my beloved wife June have always had a strong bond and shared everything up and down. Until things start falling apart and nothing was in my control anymore. Let me start from the beginning and I need your help for the first time to come out of this mess. I never knew what June was hiding from me. We've been married for years and I loved her more than anything in this world. But I could see that there was something she was keeping from me. Something that troubled her deeply and I never wanted to push her. Though I knew that whatever it is, it's something that she would eventually share with me. And so I waited patiently for that day to come. June is a jolly human, always happy and easy to be with. But what person does not have demons? Well, June did too which she never told me. I respected the fact that she's an amazing wife who keeps my happiness and needs always before me, and in the end, that is what true love even is, isn't it? But my world started to slowly crumble. It all began one morning when June received a letter. I could see the look of anticipation and shock on her face as she read through it, and I knew that something was definitely wrong. She said nothing to me about it, but I could see that it was causing her a great deal of stress. It felt like thunder was just about to explode within the house, and well, sadly I was right, and that storm took our whole house to destroy it that day. Our one relation at a time. Over the next few days, June became increasingly tense and nervous. She starts staying up late at night, pacing around the house, and she stopped eating and sleeping properly. I tried to ask her about it, but she would not say anything. It hurts when your spouse keeps secrets from you, but it hurts more when you feel helpless. When you cannot share her demons, I could not take it anymore. I needed to know what was going on with her. And so, one evening, I sat her down and asked her to tell me everything. Her face went blank like there was a pool of words waiting to flow out, but she could not gather the courage. Her eyes said it needed help, but her heart was firm on not asking. I could not bear this any longer, and so I snooped on the letter as soon as I had the chance. The letter was from some adoption agency regarding a girl named Aline. June was inquiring about a baby. Who's Aline? I had so many questions, which only Jude could answer. The next few days went by, with June being almost lost and just curious. But at the end of the road, we both loved each other, so I decided to tell June about my knowledge of the letter. Well, June was trembling from fear, and I hated to see it. That's when I decided whatever it is that's getting the best of my wife, I will support. End of story. There's nothing more than my love for her. So I said the exact words June needed to hear, I love you and there's nothing in this world that'll change that. June starts sobbing and I heard the story that changed our lives completely. She told me when she was very young, barely out of graduation when she had gotten pregnant. It took me a few seconds to react, I mean, what do you say when you come to know that your wife had a child? <laughs> what question do you even ask? But... It was a heartbreaking story, and I could see the pain in June's eyes as she told it to me. But what surprised me even more was what she said next. She told me that the letter from the adoption agency was because her child had been located and was open to meeting her. As the truth was out and I felt a sudden change in June's expression, now she was not worried or scared, but over the moon with joy. All the worry June was carrying around on her shoulders was because of me. She was scared of what I might think and how this would change our relationship. I recalled how much I love my wife and that I decided, whatever the reason is, I will support her. So, I decided to share my wife's pain. We started talking and she told me she was nervous because, well did not know what to expect, and I was worried that her child might want nothing to do with her. I could see how much this meant to her, and so I offered to help her in any way I could. Together, we started looking into an adoption law and procedure, trying to find a way to make this reunion happen. 
June was so grateful and never missed a chance to tell me how much my support meant to her. It wasn't easy, but eventually we found a way. We contacted the adoption agency and they put us in touch with June's child. We even exchanged letters, pictures, and eventually we arranged a meeting. Wow, the day of the meeting was one of the most emotional of my life. I accepted this for one reason only. Love for my wife and never imagined anything else. June was a bundle of nerves, but also filled with excitement and hope. We drove to the meeting place at a small cafe in the middle of the town, and I just waited nervously for her child to arrive. When we saw Aline, I felt equally emotional. See, she was a vibrant young girl, almost 10 years of age, and June ran towards her and stopped when Aline got close. It was a serene feeling like it happens in a movie. June, Aline, and all of us were crying happy tears like babies. I have no idea why this was so emotional. <laughs> I know you all have a very prominent doubt. Like, why did I not just ask about how June got pregnant and who the father was, right? That's probably the question on your mind. So, I did think about asking her. A lot of the times from the day I got to know about Aline, but love does wonder when I see worry changing June completely from the inside out. I knew it was not the right time to ask or say anything, and I just wanted to do something that would lessen her pain. So, I figured once June gets to see her child and the pain vanishes, well, I'll ask her to tell me exactly what happened. And that's what I did. We spent a lot of time with Aline on the day, and once we were back in the car heading home, I asked June a difficult question. What happened in your past? What's up everybody, Mr. Redito here. So today's story is a deep dive into some emotional stuff that happened in the past. Guys, update number one is a pretty wild one. So sit back, relax with your favorite beverage and prepare yourself for update number one. A few days back, I found out that my wife has a grown up 10 year old daughter, which she gave away for adoption right after her delivery. Things look so strange, but I still helped her figure out where the daughter is, and we met her last weekend. Alina is her daughter's name, and I had a very strange and loving feeling when I met that kid. See, initially, I felt so personally bonded with the child because she was a part of my wife. The lady that I love with all that I have, but it was not the truth. At this point, I feel like nothing about our relationship is true. The question remained, who is the father. Where is she right now as we left the place? Alina and we were just driving back home. So I finally did it. I dropped the bomb and asked June what was her past like. How did Alina end up in adoption and later foster parents? June requested me right away to keep an open mind and her quote, remember I love you truly before starting the story, but it did not help, did it? It just made me more scared of the story that I was about to hear. After my questions, June said right away, Ben, the truth about Alina is just one sentence. It's Luke's baby. My legs braked, the car so hard it almost killed me and June. We stopped hard in the middle of nowhere and I could see her face in the bright light when any car passed by. She's sobbing, so am I. Let me tell you who Luke is, see? I met June five years ago since my brother Luke died. Well, it's been ten years now and I miss Luke every day. We were two brothers who were raised by nannies and my father runs a very successful company. And because of that, he was always busy. Our mother passed away when I was very young due to cancer. My mother left me with no memory, but Luke had everything, her memories and her cancer as well. So... June was Luke's personal assistant, and after Luke passed away, June became my personal assistant because she was very good at her job. Young June fell in love with the Luke when she joined the company as her PA. They used to frequently travel out of the station for meetings and their bond brewed. I'm five years younger than Luke, and so is June, so 
When their love story was happening, Luke was 26 years old and June was 21. I always knew Luke was popular with the ladies, but never met any of his girlfriends. So, I married my brother's girlfriend. Huh. No, I married my brother's girlfriend who got pregnant and had a baby with my brother. Anger took the best of me and I screamed hard. I was punching this staring well and cared the least for June at the moment. She is just her most quiet self right now and it almost feels like she's prepared for my reaction and wants me to just let it all out. I started driving home because I want to be away from this person as soon as I can. I can't breathe the same air as her. I parked the car in the garage and, well, well, I barged in. The words, it's Luke's baby, it's Luke's baby, was just a going in my head. I needed some space, so I packed my bags and I left for our farmhouse. I left a text message for June saying I just need some space to clear my head and absorb um, a world of twisted facts. But deep down, I was hurt. I felt used and unloved. My wife, the one person who I love with all my heart, had betrayed me in all these years. Not once did she tell me about anything about Luke or Aline. Am I just her safety net for her future? But what I still cannot process in my mind is why, after nine years, she felt like she had to search for the child now. I hadn't been to the farmhouse in years. I mean, after Luke passed away... I had to take over the business our father had built from the ground up. At work, I always felt his absence in the air, but in this farmhouse, I feel like a piece of my heart is missing. We used to spend all summer, every single day in this place. Before Mother turned into ashes, and after that, this home was my escape. I wonder now that Luke and June have been here. Oh, how sick is that? How can June love me after she had a baby with my brother? My mind immediately goes towards a very disturbing question. Does father know? You see, my father is a very typical dad. He was never very active in our upbringing and had no clue how kids are, and always tried to solve all the problems with one thing, money. Because after mom, I supposed it only left him with money to offer. All the softness that mother brought out in him was gone. Long gone. He was a machine that crapped a load of money when we got used to it and we needed it. So, he was never active in our lives and today he lives on the outskirts of the city and spent most of his time just golfing. The next morning I went to his place. I don't know what I was expecting but I suppose I felt... Alone. I never planned on telling him about the twisted fate of June, Luke and mine, but... What he told me was even more shocking than what I was prepared for. My father told me Luke has a nine-year-old child and that he found out about her a few months back when he was going through some old company paperwork. He said that there's a sonogram he found. The girl was three months pregnant and my father wanted to know if the child was truly Luke's. So he starts finding out everything about the baby. My stomach was in some sort of knots, and I was about to puke when my father revealed that after months of diligent research and a lot of corruption later, he came to know about Aline, and that it was Luke and June's child. I was staring in blank space. I came here running from reality, and my father was the last person I wished I knew. This is turning into an evil revenge towards me, so everyone in this family knows everything but me? I hate this. I wanted none of this. 24 hours ago, I was immensely in love with my happy-go-lucky wife, wanting her to accept my past. Well, and now I know about her past and child. In fact, I was happy she was finally letting her demons out, and now I would know all about her. And now fate's tangled me in the worst possible scenario, which everyone's talking so casually about. Oh, it's Luke's baby. Oh, it's Luke's baby. I asked my father if he was the one who told the agency. So when he used all this extra money, he had to find Luke's child. He did not know that June was the mother, and my father is quite a fan of June, by the way. But one day, the private investigator he hired to locate Aline 
informed him that June plays a very significant role in Aline's DNA. I hope he was as angry as I am when he found out. But he said he couldn't be happier. There's a rage building in me at this very moment. Guys, am I crazy to feel betrayed by my wife and my father? Why is everyone so okay with this? How did they not feel bad for me and other father would have hated their daughter-in-law for cheating on two brothers? For abandoning their granddaughter. But here's my father and he says he's happy. What is wrong with these people? Update number two, a few weeks later. Well, I went to my father's in search of a little peace. But to my disbelief, I found out that my father started the search for Aline. The letter about Aline's location, which agency the child's under, was my father's doing and not June's. It's been over a month since I'm living at this farmhouse and I don't want to go back home. I don't. I'm not going to work either. I don't think it even matters anymore. Even June hasn't tried to contact me. I mean, how heartbreaking is it? Now June has found the child of her and Luke, and she doesn't care if I'm alive or not. So, this was a calculated move on her part to be married to me, and as we don't have any prenuptial agreements whenever we get divorced, she's going to get half of everything that I own. And then she lives happily ever after with her child just like that. Well, on the other hand, my father has called me numerous times but I'm in no mood for his justification. All of our life has been absent, and now, in the middle of this, he wants to just meddle in this complicated, sick mess. And he supports the drama, too. He was the one that let June know about Aline. He obviously wants Aline back in our life, but does no one care about me, my emotions, how I feel? I feel so depressed that I might just run away. They all can just live happily as a family with Luke's child. I just truly, I just truly miss my mom. If she were here, none of this would have happened. I have a lot of unread messages from my father, which I don't plan to read. For me, knowing that my father intentionally spoiled my life and influenced my wife to locate her love child is more than enough to cut ties, right? But... I guess he has much deeper plans to regret. So. He came by the farmhouse today. Nothing said or done can make me go back is what I clarified as soon as he approached the door. He smiled at me. No words. No regrets. Just a blissful or even a pitiful smile. My father thinks I'm a fool. I noticed he had a bag in his hand and I'm not interested. He keeps the bag on the table and starts talking. The first sentence that came out of his lips made me stunned. Oh, this is Luke's child. Uh, uh, have you ever thought about that? This is your brother's child. Right here is your brother's child. The brother that was like a parent to you when none of us were around. I hate to listen to this, but deep down in my heart, I know that if Luke was in my shoes, he would be restless to meet the child and keep her for life. But how do I ignore the fact that June had kept me in the dark all these years? Is there even a way I can forgive her? For all those years when we were dating or when we get married, when we bought our first home, and even when we loved each other. Wow, there were millions of times she could have mentioned, By the way, I loved your brother and I have a child too. But she did not. Instead, she chose to forever hide this fact from me and waited for an opportunity when she could leave and be financially secure. I hate her, and every moment I spend madly loving her. My father doesn't answer any of my question and points towards the bag that he brought. He pleads with me to have a look inside at the file in hopes that maybe after reading this exact file, I will give June a chance to explain herself. He left after he gave me a hug. That hug was more of a, I'm sorry, baby. I can't point my finger at the feeling. If it was, I'm sorry you're in the middle of this life crisis, or I'm sorry I was the worst father uh, ever, 
<laughs> I gathered the courage and opened the file. It's a prenup. A prenup was signed by June before we got married. All the things I believed as her motive are crashing in front of my eyes one glass wall at a time. My father made her sign a prenup? June is an orphan, and she's worked extremely hard to educate herself and be financially independent, but there's no way she could have survived life with a baby on her own. So when Luke died after four months of her pregnancy, she had no other option than to give up the baby. Well, she knew my father would never have believed Luke's PA had a baby with her. Hell, I wouldn't have. But... My father never trusted her, so he secretly made her sign a prenup and she never ever let me find this out. I need answers. It was a long time due. So I drove straight to my house. Update number three. In a few weeks, I found out that my wife had a baby with my brother. And my father was trying to find that baby, and my father also made my wife sign a prenup. Can any human process these facts all together? I don't think so, but I'll try. I drove to my home after I met my dad because I have so many questions for June, and I just simply can't take this any longer. I tried fighting hard with my emotions, but it feels like an endless battle. It was 7.30pm by the time I reached home, and June was not there. She might have gone out for some grocery shopping, at least I hope. She didn't leave me. It just felt strange to be in the same house I've lived in for the past five years, feeling so empty. June and I have had the most beautiful five years any married couple can hope for. But without her in the house, it just feels like a piece of... A beautiful portrait is missing. I made myself a cup of coffee when I heard her car pulling into the parking lot. I was wrong. She didn't leave me. But she sure looks different. Is it possible for anyone to look different in just a month? Maybe heartbreak does change people. Well, she ran up and hugged me and started sobbing and chatting, Sorry! I started sobbing along with her because all of these feelings that I've buried in my chest are now choking me. Well, we stayed like that for the next 10 minutes and then I asked about the prenup. She didn't find it shocking and answered with all the strength that she was left with. And before getting married, my father wanted her to sign the prenup and she made it clear that she has no interest in my finances. She looked at me when she can do anything to make our marriage happen. She loves me. June says these words to me now. Marrying me was the easiest decision that she's ever made in her life. She's insisting on explaining to me why she gave Aline for adoption and how she married me. And I wanted assurance that nothing about our love was planned. So June starts from the beginning. She was a fresh graduate, young, just 21 years of age, when she got out of the job as a PA to Luke. She wanted to come out of the hard life that she had, and she worked hard. And Luke was the most charming man I knew. They fell in love. It didn't take very long. She always knew my father would be against Luke dating a girl who was poor and, by the way, an orphan. So they hid their relationship. One day she found out she was pregnant and was scared that Luke would break up with her, but Luke loved June with all his heart. He was crazy excited for that kid and even went to every doctor's appointment with her. When she was three months pregnant, she quit the job because of health complications and moved in with Luke. They figured once the baby was born, my father would have no say and would just accept June. But before their plan succeeded, Luke was detected with fourth stage cancer. And he left us soon after. Young and penniless June decides to give the baby up for adoption and she took help from the nun from her orphanage and delivered the baby. She named her Aline. All June ever wanted was a good life for Aline. She knew if she went to my father, he would never believe her and that was a risk she did not want to take. So the best choice was uh, the hope that a loving family will soon adopt her and give her the best of life. I feel bad for June, but that does not mean that I can just 
ever find the strength to forgive the fact that she deliberately chose to hide her relationship with Luke. She knew I loved her. After she gave up the baby, she came back to work, and at the time, I was just learning my way through work. She became my personal assistant, and now that I recall, I was the one who fell in love with her and pursued my attraction. She never meant for us to fall in love, and oh boy, I had to prove my love over and over for her to finally break her wall down and accept me as her boyfriend. We started dating after four years of Luke's death, and that's a long time for somebody to move on. But how can she move on from the fact that he was my brother? Isn't that some kind of moral issue? So I ask her, June, why did you hide Luke and Aline's memory when you love someone and try to understand their point of view? Often things make sense, June said. And she said all she wanted was to make a living and work at our company and make her feel close to Luke. When I asked her out, she immediately let me down and said this can never happen. But as time went by, people faded away, and she starts feeling for me too, and I just wanted to tell that she was the one Luke loved first. How can you not love her? With all that she had faced and survived, she's the most positive person I've ever known. Ever. She knew how much I loved and missed Luke and how sure I was about my feelings for her. So, she decided to never hurt me by letting me know that Luke fell in love with the love of my life first. I was never as confident and charming as Luke. I didn't have many girlfriends, nor was I the best choice for business. The feeling of being second always disturbed me, and June knew it. She believed we all should just bury the past and live the life we truly deserve. Until one day when she realized that Aline was not adopted and is still surviving in the foster care system. Her maternal instincts kicked in and all she wanted was her girl to be home. I know June had the best interest of everybody in her heart, but even after her reasoning, I can never forgive her. She hid the most important part of her life from me and June. And I just want to leave, and no matter the past, I'll always help her financially, and she should adopt Aline. I strongly believe it. She should get her baby back. That's when June told me where she was, and when I came home, June's pregnant. I'm going to be a father. Emotions rushed through my body all at once, happy, shocked, heartbroken, on top of the world, everything at once. I'm going to be a father. Now, I'm baffled. What should I do? I can never live with Aline and June. It'll always hurt me, and in no world I want to leave June now that she's pregnant. Aline's no one's fault either. She didn't do anything wrong. She's my brother's daughter. But June's been through so much already. How can I ask her to let go of her kid? I can't. I need help. What would you guys do? Is there any way I can have my happy family back? And, and I, I'm going to be a dad. Thank you for all the help.